I think I've always been extremely dedicated at some points. I'm like a huge person who puts the goal on your phone and it reminds me every single day. I'm like insanely goal and time oriented. I want my time on everything. I used to write down every single set I did in a book and it has all my time goals and all my best practice times in it. And then it's funny because like when I'm swimming in the 100 backstroke, I don't really think like, oh, what my time is. Baker at 27.90, she is well under world record pace. I realized I had gone out so fast because I had such amazing swimmers on both sides of me and to be pretty far ahead, I was like, wow, I must be having a pretty good swim. At the wall, we keep an eye on the time, it is Kathleen Baker. When I saw that I was 58 flat, I was just shocked and so pumped at the same time. It's like every swimmer's dream to break a world record. But the hardest part about being on top is staying on top. You could never test us. Oh yeah, cause we're the best. We go. So the instructions are 133, brain off, a little bit more progressive each time. Definitely gets a round of parachute, a round of fins, a round of paddles, and it goes six rounds of that. Dave Marsh, my coach, pretty amazing guy, technique guru, and is able to put my stroke together quicker than anyone I know. He's been my coach since I was 14, so he's really like made my swimming, so it's been cool for him. Kathleen was on that junior squad, not on the uh, elite squad when she came down to swim for us. But I knew that this girl had a fire inside of her. She would actually arrive way before all the other young swimmers. She would sit on the bench and just watch these elite swimmers go back and forth across the pool. Then every once in a while, I would say, hey Kathleen, you want to get in for the last half hour? And uh, she would have her suit on already, rip the clothes off, jump in the water and get going within minutes. I just always wanted to be first in everything. Like during standardized tests in second grade, I wanted to finish first because I thought that meant you win. And my parents were like, Kathleen, you do realize that means you're doing worse in school. And like, I sort of think that that's why I like swimming and sort of helped me rein that competitiveness in a little bit. Kathleen's the kind of athlete that if she arrives at the pool and the doors are locked and she's supposed to be training, she would chew the door handle off of the pool to get her training done. I mean, she's always eager to find out what we're doing this day for training, and that's why the outcome, I believe, has been so tremendous for her. Unfortunately, uh, although I, honestly at this point it may be a blessing, uh, she has Crohn's disease. Hearing the diagnosis at 13, I felt like my swimming career was over. I was like devastated and thought that I wasn't going to be able to accomplish anything in the sport. From Team Elite San Diego, Kathleen Baker. It's really been awesome that I've had a coach who really understands it. She's been a big part of me learning as a coach that sometimes you need to be patient, but while you're being patient, go ahead and be eager as well. And that really defines Kathleen. How important is it to have a good relationship with your coach at your level <clears throat> is the most important thing in the world. It needs to be a professional working relationship, but it also needs to be a friendship. <clears throat> if you can't have a good time and laugh with your coach, then you're not gonna enjoy training. And then if you don't enjoy training, like, what's the point? Okay, true, um, but they also, a good coach provides guidance, determination, and charisma. They have a level of energy on the pool deck that is inspiring. Ooh. That was good. All right, what else? <clears throat> my voice is kind of messed up right now. I went to NCAAs last week and was screaming my face off. <gasps> the goal of a coach in practice is to get more out of the athlete than the athlete thinks is physically possible. <clears throat> Pushing you to new levels and then in the end, reaping the benefits. It's their job to make sure you're mentally prepared to dive in the water and swim your absolute fastest. The role of a coach is different for each athlete. For me, I love being able to have an open dialogue. I think that's what's really special about David. You're able to talk to him about what you need. As a coach that's working with the highly motivated top 10, top 16 in the world, I think you really have to build a partnership. 
The rotation was sooner there, now swim with that adjusted rotation. Now try to time that up with this lighter weight. It's very, very rare that my expectations are exceeded. I think that's fair to say probably for a lot of coaches, because we expect a lot. Come on, fast! But I think the best kids like high expectations. Terry has had a huge role in my career. I grew so much as a person in college and learned so much about myself, and it's so awesome to be around someone who's so inspiring and like really gives a lot of women confidence. I think we really try to let our athletes become the best coaches of themselves. Typically, I will say to an athlete, hey, this is what I saw on your backstroke swim, but you watch it and you tell me what you see. Come on, brother, stay with that, stay with that. I think it's important for a coach to be competitive as well. That's three, three. Just to share that passion about being the best or being great. Nine, one. Good. Another tip, by the way, is you want to make one correction at a time. Don't try to correct everything. People always ask me, what does it take to be as successful as our top swimmers have been? And it's like they want the, the thing. And I'm like, no, it's not the thing, it's the everything. At the level that Kathleen and world class swimmers are, what you can't have is too many weaknesses. You can't have things you don't do well. And so everything matters, and your mindset may be as much as anything. Every weights workout I end with a pretty hard cardio or weight circuit. Some days it's harder than others. I would say that you guys really came in on a day that it was a little bit killer. That was where it was supposed to end, but I asked for an extra ab exercise. Pull, two more, five here. I love abs, like I will do abs all the time and I really wanted a little bit extra. My role is just keeping her strong throughout her entire season. That's right. I'm getting strong. <laughs> I love doing that because I know how hard it is and when you're sweating and you're out of breath, it really makes me feel like I'm working hard. I think doing extra at the end of each practice or in a weight session is important. It sort of sets you apart from different athletes. Drive, KB. Drive. I love to have a little bit of cardio to keep my heart rate up while I'm also trying to do different exercises. Unique about backstroke is that you're on your back and it's the only stroke on your back and you don't really get to see anyone and you really have to focus on doing underwater kicks. I like to put the wedge up on the highest it can go out of the water. I like to give that because it gives me a big shoot across the water. I definitely want to have a nice arch but making sure I'm not just pushing up but pushing out at the same time so I don't just have a huge arch and go deep. I'm gonna show you how to grind, show you how to shine, show you how to most important is your setup in the water. How your body's riding in the water is critical. So if your head's too high, your hips are going to be low. If your head's too far back, you're going to be plowing through the water, not swimming in the water. With the lead, Kathleen Baker. Working on your leg strength. For me, my legs get so tired by the end of 100 back that the kickouts become a little bit challenging uh, to the 15 meter mark. First foundationally is the legs kicking consistent, and then you want to create some power with the connection of the arms. So as the hand goes in, you rotate the body slightly, you grip water nice and high, and your body goes past the hand. I overreach all the time in my backstroke, and a lot of times it takes a coach like telling me and working with me, and we hold the pole over me so that you can swim and make sure you see that your arms are um, entering where they should be. She's doing this in order to feel her catch right away. Because in backstroke, you don't want to reach, overreach behind your head. You want to be over your shoulder. And if you'll watch her, she'll tend to get up over her head. And then we just kind of nudge her back. I think it's the most painful stroke in a 200. My legs are shot. My heart rate is so high. I can barely get out of the water. Um, so I definitely think that it's the hardest stroke on your legs. You know, to be in the best possible condition to perform, at the, the highest level in the tuner backstroke requires uh, the best training. And I think we're on the road to building up that training right now. I think my ultimate goal would definitely be able to win a world championship individually and medal in all of my events as well, whether that's third or second. So I'm really hoping for that and training hard for it.
the thing I want to tell young people is that, you know, Kathleen is not the most talented swimmer that I've coached. She's probably the most eager, and you can overcome things you may be less at with your intention and eagerness. So go get it. Pool swimmers probably think we're crazy. If you're not really paying attention, you can just end up being run over by like 30 people. That's when you always question your sanity and why you chose to do this. Most of the time, you're just like, this sucks. I just want to get out and <laughs> get like a hamburger or something. 